Hello and welcome. My name is James from the DSO Imager channel and tonight I'm going to show you how I processed uh, my first comet image ever. Um, I took a picture of the 2017 K2. Uh, it was uh, flying within the within the frame of the globular cluster M10 and so I thought it'd be cool uh, to capture both those objects in a single picture. Being my first comet, I um, uh, did not have a full understanding of just how complex uh, putting this picture together, especially with the uh, globular cluster in the same frame. That was uh, that proved to be quite a challenge for me. Uh, so anyway, let's take a look at what I have. Now I did use a monochrome camera, so that certainly uh, didn't make things any easier for me. Uh, ideally, I think a one-shot color would be a, a better choice for this. And the reason for that is that the comet's moving pretty quickly. So I needed the red, green, and blue uh, shots to be um, as close to each other as possible. And what I actually did on the sequence side is I disabled the autofocus. I got all the uh, filters focused as best I could. And then I had the sequence just take RGB, 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 and and uh, go through each of that without doing the autofocus. Because if I left autofocus auto foc auto enabled and did an autofocus after each uh, filter change, uh, that would have taken forever, and it would have defeated the purpose of trying to get everything in quick succession. And now I also didn't bother with luminance in this case. It just went RGB. Uh, and I got about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that per filter. I think the, no, less than that. The whole, the whole integration came out to just under an hour, about 58 minutes if I recall. Uh, so here's the red. Now the, uh, I used the uh, ASI 1600 mono and I used the, um, uh, the AT115 EDT. And so you can see the stars here look great, the cluster looks great. The comet, not so great, because this is an initial stack, stacking the traditional way with, uh, with the stars. So, you know, obviously the, the comet's moving, and that's part of the challenge here. Because you actually end up having to stack the data twice. You have to stack it for the stars, and then you have to stack it using a comet-aligned routine. And then you put the two, two pictures together. So there's our green... and there's the blue. And if we stack these together, this is what we get. So this is, uh, I don't believe there's, yeah, just uh, auto stretch. I guess there's a little bit of processing in there, probably color calibration. Add a satellite or something fly through there that didn't get uh, corrected. Uh, as far as subs, these were 120 second subs. Uh, gain 76, I think. Now, uh, to get the comet aligned, Pixinsight has a tool called where is it? There we go. Comet alignment. And what happens here is that you put all your lights, your calibrated lights, in here. And um, it does a integrate, it, it aligns them based on the timestamps of the images. And what that got me was this. So now the alignment. Uh, comment alignment tool does have, um, or when you integrate this, you use uh, rejection, and that actually gets rid of most of the stars for the most part, but you still see artifacts of the stars behind. Uh, so that's something that you have to deal with, and obviously the cluster is kind of a mess there. But what we're wanting is the comet, and so that actually doesn't look too bad. I mean, the core is clearly there. You can see the color is not quite lined up. And I wonder if that's because I'm using um, 
you know, separate filters are uh, mono here. And uh, here's what it looks like with some DBE in there. And maybe some color correction in this as well. Let's see. Yeah. Yep, and then the stretch. Now, in order to get rid of all these artifacts, I had to make a mask that would capture them. And so I did a stack with all of the frames, RGB, into a single master stack. And uh, that's what this is. So, I mean, you can clearly see the, the stars here. And, um, I mean, there's our comet. It's not bad. And so from this, I created a range mask. And so the idea here is that I can protect the comet, take it out of this mask, and actually I took this out as well. And then I uh, am able to just use curves to pull back and basically dial back these artifacts. Uh, so let's see, I switched to a clean workspace and this was the initial mass that I created but uh, and I started working on this uh, on the image using this mask and it worked out extremely well but I realized that I was only protecting the core and even though the tail was very faint it's still there and I had eliminated the tail so I had to go back and there was a lot of trial and error and uh, going back. So it was definitely a, a learning process. So you can see these different masks that I worked on to try to protect the comet tail uh, while not making it too... Um, I didn't want it to look too, um, uh, too coarse here. It needed to blend in pretty well. And I didn't want it to be too big. Uh, but these are the different masks that I made. And then you, you add these masks together uh, with, with the original mask, and you end up with stuff like, like that. All right, I think this is the one I ultimately ended up going with. So, I mean, you apply this to your image, uh, and then you inverse it, and then you can use the curves to dial back, and you end up with something like this. And so here I can I can show you, right? So that's what it looked like. That's there's our mask. All right, and there are all your little artifacts and there. So I mean I mean they're still there, but I mean it's barely noticeable now. Some of the brighter ones like this, I took this into Photoshop and I just used the healing brush to take these artifacts out. And I use the healing brush to take this out. Now, remember how I said uh, that this was my first uh, mask and I wasn't protecting the tail? This is the results with that mask. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it looks good all everywhere except uh, we blew away the tail. So, yep, had to start over. So anyway, now the challenge was getting the the cluster back in there, right? So you do, I used a star exterminator to pull the stars out, uh, but I've noticed that um, both star net and star exterminators seem to struggle if you're trying to pull uh, stars out of a glob. And I mean, it makes sense, it's a star cluster, so why would you normally be removing the stars? And so what happens is it doesn't it doesn't grab all the stars, right? So, I mean, this is the issue. Look how look how uh, thin thinned out. We're missing the core. So I mean, you can't. I mean, this looks more like an open cluster than a a globular cluster. And so what I ended up doing was I made a separate pull here and this I just 
Yeah, let's look at the history so you can see how I did this. All right, so I just darkened everything out, removed the stars. So this is what was left behind with Star Exterminator. I got rid of this with Clone Stamp, and uh, I preserved this. So then what I did is I added this this uh, to the regular stars. Oops, not that. And uh, what I ended up with was this here. So, I mean, I'm not 100% satisfied with this, but it was so much work to get to this point that I was basically wanting to just be done with it. <laughs> And so I went with it. I mean, the stars are nice, tight points. I just, I feel like some of the mass has been lost in the star cluster. But, I mean, in this case, the star cluster really is the sidekick, right, of the whole image. And so anyway, next it was to put the finishing touches on the comet itself. And I ended up here. So mostly a little bit of... Uh, curves to so kind of darken the background and um, maybe a touch of saturation to help. You see a lot of comet issues where it's this green color along the whole, whole tail and at least for this one I didn't I didn't get that. Maybe I didn't expose long enough or maybe there was something wrong in my processing uh, but um, maybe next time when I get a, a brighter comet I'll, I'll have more success with the color. All right, and so I put them together, and this is what I ended up with. So I think it's okay for a first attempt on comets. I'd love to hear uh, people's thoughts and comments on this image. Uh, have any of you guys processed comet shots like this before? And uh, if you have your comet shots posted anymore, let me know where it's at. Uh, just one, one quick note uh, to keep the um, the spammers and the scammers off my comments. If you drop a link in comments on any of the videos, I have that disabled, so or blocked. So what'll happen is if you put a link to your picture, it's going to go in and in, uh, into a, re a review section for me. So if I confirm that the link is good, I'll approve it and then it'll pop up. So just throwing that out there that if you make a comment and you put a link to your image in the comment section, uh, but you don't see your comment right away, just uh, just give it like half a day. As long as everything is cool, I'll probably approve it and then it'll show up. Uh, so anyway, uh, clear skies and have a good evening.